Welcome to Bad Influence. This week we'll be reviewing the one you've all been waiting for, Sonic 2. Can it live up to the hype? I'm Z Wright and I'll be reporting from America on all the latest games, equipment and news. And we'll be checking out the hidden costs of handhelds. Just how much do you pay to play? This machine cost me about £100. The cartridge to play on it is 25 and the batteries to run them both about another four pounds. Now, I expect to get years of pleasure out of both the machine and the cartridge. But what about the batteries? How long will they last? Well, this morning we started the Bad Influence battery test. Mm. We're using a Supervision, a Game Boy, a Lynx and a Game Gear for the test. We use brand new standard batteries because they're cheaper. The Supervision and the Game Boy take four, the Game Gear and the Lynx take six. Find some of the victims, you first. All right. We set them all going at exactly 9.30 this morning and told the crew to play them until the battery's packed up. The results? We'll have those later in the programme. After all the hype, Sonic 2 is being released worldwide next Tuesday, or Sonic Tuesday. This is a copy of the first ever rough sketch of Sonic given to me by Mr. Kanari, his creator, when I was in Japan recently. Three quarters of a million copies of the Game Gear, Master System and Mega Drive versions are being shipped to Britain this week. So, tell us what all the fuss is about. Here's James on the Mega Drive version. This game's great. It's everything I expected from Sonic. So many platform games are so predictable, but this one's brilliant. It's definitely the best game out on the Mega Drive. At first, Tails really bugged me. You tried to shake him off, but once you get used to him, he's great. He's an ally and not an enemy. It's amazingly clever how they've done this to create a second character which follows you around. This is a great bit. The animation that's gone into this is fantastic. This level's great. Just look at the background. It's called the Casino Night. It's, I think it's set in Las Vegas. It's a brilliant idea for a game. It's like it's trapped in a giant fruit machine. I did get to the last level on my first go, but I'd still buy it. It's just a brilliant game. There's so many different things to see and find. It's brilliant. It's even better than Sonic 1. I like the two-player game because you can play with your friends instead of them just sitting there watching you. This isn't my favourite sort of game, but it's very well programmed and there's some great ideas in here. Tails gets on my nerves a bit, but I'll still definitely buy the game. And so, the final scores for Sonic 2. The boys gave it 5 out of 5 and the girls were equally impressed. Five out of five from them, too. It lives up to the hype. Steady there, Spikey. Ah, hello there, slimy furtless. I'll finish my Sonic by Numbers kit later. My first Triassic cheat today is for Pinball Fantasies on the Amiga. First, load the table that you want, and then, to get extra balls, type in extra balls. Extra balls. You now get five balls instead of three. Then, to keep the balls in play, even when you've been totally incompetent with the flippers, don't type in balls in play, because that would be stupid. Instead, type in digital illusions. Obvious or what? Right then, Spikey, hold still. If I say virtual reality to you, I bet this is the image that springs to mind. And full immersion VR can be a lot of fun and we'll be looking at the latest games as the series goes on. But there is another kind of VR which doesn't involve a bulky headset. This is a desktop VR system. This flat screen is a window in on a virtual world. This world was designed for the police. It's a recreation of a road traffic accident. And you can see the green car crashing into the red car. But you can replay that as often as you like, looking at it from different angles. And there it's about to crash. I like this view, it's the view that the witness would have standing in the phone box across the road. But as well as that, you can use this input device, known as a space ball, to move anywhere you want, to see the accident from any perspective you like. You can move it up and down and forwards and backwards, all by just exerting pressure and pushing and pulling. And it gives you as much control as you like and you can rotate it, and generally see the scene any way you want. Although if you do push it a bit too hard, it does tend to go wild. This underwater world trains people to operate remote control submarines around oil platforms. And there are lots of other applications for desktop VR. For some tasks, it's far more suitable than the immersion system. The pictures are better, and of course, you don't need to wear a helmet. 
and he's been to meet a group of children in Nottingham who have a special need for this system. Here we are, madam. Lunch is served. They say one of the most frustrating things about being disabled is that people have to do things for you. You don't have control over your own world. And it's a problem that Ruth and all my mates here have to face every day. This is the Shepherd School in Nottingham. Many of the children who come here are physically disabled and all of them have learning difficulties. For every pupil here, this world is a constant challenge. So imagine a world where you could explore things properly despite your disabilities. A world where you could go wherever you liked, as fast as you liked, with complete freedom. Welcome to that world. This is a virtual reality system which has been specially developed for the children here at Shepherd School. Wow! It offers a chance to move about in a way that many of these children have never experienced before. The tiniest movement on the space ball allows you to travel through the virtual world. I'll take us around the corner. Brilliant. Down here, avoiding these parked cars. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. For me, the most important benefit is that children with most disabilities can actually be helped. Children with a hearing disability can learn about signs. Children with a vis visual disability can actually zoom in and look at things more clearly. And children with a physical disability can have the power to actually move around. This package also helps the children learn a sign language called Makaton. It's a basic sign and symbol language which teaches people with learning difficulties how to communicate. At the moment, there are only eight Macton symbols in the system, including ball, telephone, and car. No. Yeah, yeah, I know, and car. Yeah. She's very proud of me when I get it right, no. which isn't very often. Come on, round this corner. Yes, Four. Can you do the hands? The system Four. was developed by a research well scientist at Nottingham University, led by David Brown. We develop something, we test it on the kids, car. we go well back, done. we redevelop. And what's been the most popular things with the kids? What do you find they like the most? I think driving around the world in the buildings, stuff like that, stuff you've seen today. Driving the helicopter, making noises like yourself. Left side. Eventually, David hopes that the children will be able to use the system without adult help. Some of the older pupils are already good enough to teach virtual learning to their friends. How do you help people with it? Tell me what you do. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I, some people, some people can't talk properly. I help them with sign. And if people don't understand, they say it to me, and I say, I, I tell them what to say. What's your favourite bit? Football. Football. Oh, I saw you making the football bounce around on the screen. Do you like doing that? Yeah. Soon this system will have proper sound effects, lots more symbols, and you'll be able to take a friend into the virtual world with you. Of course, nobody says virtual reality will ever replace real play or ordinary lessons, but it's an excellent way of getting to do stuff that you don't do ordinarily. Me, I'm learning how to be a helicopter pilot, if rather badly. And now a preview of Lemmings 2 for the Amiga and PC hot off the programmer's workbench. When completed, this game will have 12 new tribes, jointly capable of 60 invaluable survival skills. This is the Circus Tribe, starring balloons and archers. In the Polar Tribe, you need to be able to ski and scoop in order to survive. Lemmings 2 was due out this week, but as only 35 of the skills have been created in time, they've had to put it back. It'll now be out in February. The biggest toy shop in the world just became the newest arcade, too. Hamley's in London's Regent Street has transformed its basement into an electronic arcade. Fun for kids and parents alike, it even has a very civilised coffee bar. I'll take two sugars, thank you. Now a game for people like our director who think they're God. Act, act Razor on the snares. Thank you very much. Yes, very good, I'm sorry. Act Razor on the snares. Due out in February and you're a God. Well, almost. You get to save six lands from evil enslavement using magic, mythology and a bit of brute force. Knock out the bad guys and start a repopulation programme. It's all in a day's work for a super being. The long-awaited sequel to R-Type will be available for the Game Boy in January and it's even more fiendish than the original. Once more, you take on the might of the Baidu Empire, but this time in your new improved R-9 spaceship. A shoot em up to go, I've heard it's even more difficult than getting a compliment out of Nam Rood. We wanted to bring you some hot news from the USA this week, but when I rang Z to find out what was going down stateside, his mum answered and she said, um, I'm sorry, love, I think he's gone shopping. 
This is Sears Department Store in Eastern Seattle. Like a lot of stores here, they've just expanded their games department. But it's not with the electrical goods or even with the computers. No, it's now official. Video games are a fashion accessory. Nintendo dominates over here. One in every three American homes has at least one piece of Nintendo hardware. So, in most game shops, the Sega display tends to be much smaller, quieter, and strangely hedgehoggy. Sega's fighting back hard though. They're giving away free radios to encourage people to buy Game Gears. And it's also rumored that they're planning a TV cartoon based on Sonic. Nintendo, meanwhile, is getting into the movie business with the new $40 million movie, The Super Mario Brothers, starring Bob Hoskins as the Brooklyn plumber himself. But now I'm going to make you really sick. The big difference between Britain and America is the prices. Over here, you can get a Genesis, uh, this is what you call a Mega Drive, for $99, which is about 50 pounds. A Super NES is also $99, about a third of the price in Britain. The games are often half the price, and they're released much sooner. Eagerly awaited are Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy. Another Mario game for Super NES is Super Mario Kart with new 3D graphics. And of course, there's the edutainment package, Mario Paint. For the Sega Genesis system right now, the big hot games, we've got a couple of new releases. Um, Kid Chameleon is a new hot game. Um, Ferrari is a new game also. And of course, um, Sonic the Hedgehog continues to be their you know, number one seller. Finally, a word of warning. If you're lucky enough to come to America for a vacation and fancy stocking up on cheap games, be careful. Most Sega games will work on British kit, but the only Nintendo ones that will are Game Boy games. Oh yeah, by the way, don't buy this. It was Nintendo's attempt to attract more girls to buy games. Barbie, brilliant. Not. Aha! Remember this moment, Furtless. I've just finished my time machine. When I flick this switch, Time itself will run backwards, which reminds me. Here's a cheat for Back to the Future 3 on the Mega Drive. Simply pause the game, then hold down A and press up, down, left, right to skip levels. And now, to test my time machine. <laughs> machine time my test two now and. Levels, skip to left, Right, down, up, press then A, down, hold, then game the pause. Mega Drive, the on three, future, the two back, cheat, and here's. Rude Nam riddance good. Now for the results of our battery tests. Remember, we've been playing the machines continuously since 9.30 this morning. The first one ran out less than an hour later. Was it up to a crucial point? It was, yeah, stage three. Oh, no, well, I'm afraid you don't get more batteries. I oh, know. Next to the bite the dust was the Lynx. Just under two hours. Were you at a crucial stage in the game? Uh, yeah, I was, actually. Tough, that's showbiz, man. <laughs> so far, just what we expected. The Game Gear and the Lynx have both got colour screens, which means they use up a lot of power. The next machine to go was just a few minutes before we started recording the programme this afternoon. What's that, about... Eight hours. Eight hours. Well, that's a good run. Did you get a good score? I did, yeah. I don't believe in. So, the winner is the Game Boy. It worked out at about 20 hours, which means that the running costs for all these machines on standard batteries are as follows. For the Game Boy, about 8p an hour. For the Supervision, about 20p an hour. That's the black and white ones. For the colour ones, the Lynx, £2 an hour and double that for the Game Gear, an astonishing £4 an hour, which means that if you play a Game Gear two or three hours a day for a year, the money you've spent on batteries could have bought a thousand hamburgers or a small car. Thank you, Violet. Or a top-of-the-range hi-fi. Thank you, Violet. Or 20 mega drives. Thank you, Violet. I think we've got the idea. Put another way, what it means is that if you practice a game to completion, it takes you about 40 hours. It will cost you somewhere in the region of £150. Makes you think, doesn't it? We only use standard batteries for our tests. The answer for longer gameplay is, of course, long-life batteries. They cost nearly twice as much, but they last up to four times longer, so they're good value. And this machine will run 
That's about three pounds an hour. What about rechargeable batteries? Well, the thing with rechargeable batteries is, yeah, they're good value for money, and yes, they're environmentally friendly. But for handhelds, especially the colour screens, they're not so good because they lose their charge so quickly. They don't stay charged for a very long time and they'll be fading out before you pass level one or level two. A tip though, if you want long game play, play your handheld with the sound down because the battery power lasts a lot longer. And if all else fails, of course, the mains adapter is what you need, isn't it? Ooh. But that defeats the object of the handheld, doesn't it? And now, some more games reviews. Our second game this week is Axelayer, futuristic shoot 'em up on the SNES. The battle for the galaxy is on. Against deadly aliens, you're the only one who can save the day if you can get past level one. Over to Sarah for the review. This is a tough game, but it's certainly a challenge. You have to be a real shoot 'em up expert to get anywhere quickly on this. But it's good fun. I'm afraid I'm still on level one. This bit makes you feel really seasick because the graphics scroll so fast. I felt quite ill when I first got to this bit. Since then, I've been here plenty of times. It's so difficult to get past the first level, unless you play it on easy. It's a very good looking game, and the music's great. There's a brilliant choice of weapons, and the choice gets better on each level. I'll certainly think about buying this game, even though it's so tough. I really want to beat it now, and determined to finish it one day. This game's quite hard to get into, but once you do get into it, it's really good. The graphics here are great, and the enemies keep changing. I particularly like the second level, but it's just a bit hard at the beginning. This is just shooting things. I like collecting things, so I like the power-ups. I wouldn't want to play this game for too long because you get bored of it, but I love the graphics. And the scores for Axley, the boys gave it four out of five, but the girls just an average score, three out of five. The Curse of Enchanted released this week for Amiga and PC. The hero, Brad, is shackled in a dungeon and has to escape for a labyrinth of rooms and caves. Here's Giles. This is a great game, I can get stuck in it for days. I'm calling the guard, so, he, so he'll give me a key when he trips over the steps. I'll use this key to free myself from the manacles, which I'm chained to. Here I have to jump the Ice Queen's bullets, otherwise I'll turn into a block of ice, which will send me right back to the left of the screen. There's all these icons you can pick up, look at, or attack things, or jump them. I'll definitely buy this game. It's as good as Monkey Island. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's excellent value for money. This is a really frustrating game. At first it looks good, but you have to be a real lateral thinker to get anywhere. I gave this game 3 out of 5. That's because it's not my kind of game. If you like these kind of games, you'll love this one. And the scores for the Curse of Enchantia, the boys gave it 3 out of 5, an average score, and the girls also gave it 3 out of 5. More games review details in the Data Blast. To access that, you know what to do. Set your video to record now. Last week we asked you to name the cowboy character made famous by Robert Redford. The answer was the Sundance Kid, and the first correct winner out of the hat was Gemma Gray from Newcastle in Staffordshire. We'll be sending this Gen Gear with TV tuner to you. Terrific. This week's competition prize, we're giving away a Mega Drive with Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 2 and the Bad Influence t-shirt. To win those, tell us on a postcard or a stuck-down envelope the name of the hedgehog in the Beatrix Potter stories. And it wasn't Sonic, and it wasn't Spikey. Answers to be marked competition and to reach us by no later than next Monday, and the address is coming up at the end of the data blast. Don't forget, to, by the way, the Bad Influence magazine. It's full of information and behind-the-scenes gossip, especially look about Violet oh, Berlin, so I recommend that you get them? it. Let's see that. Have a great week. We'll see you next week for Bad Influence and via Saturday morning, 9.25 for WhatsApp Doc. Take care. Bye-bye.